joined as always by my friend allison.human and uh who's allison plus on the internet and also gary.human that is uh was previously invisible and watered down coffee and he's binary gary on uh the internet and i am chris and i am jazz sequence on the internet and collectively we are uh most of us two-thirds not invisible and we are Binary Jazz, a podcast about things that we don't know anything about that uh, are brought to us uh, without discussion previously. And then we try to figure out what these things mean or what they are and have a semi-coherent conversation about that, but probably mostly about other stuff. That's how the show works. Do you think that there's a prerequisite for being an inquisitive person to be on the show? Yes. Okay. But I like how it's phrased as a prerequisite, like there's some sort of committee that is has evaluated yeah. us. Yeah, we'll, we'll block you out the door <laughs> if you're not inquisitive enough. It's just that's just how we roll. That seems fair. Uh, it's a self-review uh, contemplation over and over again. Uh, it really is. That is factually accurate. <laughs> Too contemplative. I don't think I've had my quarterly slack like questioning of reality though this quarter i think i skipped it for quarter one of this year so quarter well, two, three, there's, yeah. there's always there's the, the now is always a great time to start to start questioning your your core your core <laughs> beliefs and values yeah it, that's true that is always true oh, it's always never true. too late <laughs> never too late to question everything you know you remember that okay if you learn anything from me <laughs> Oh, got real serious. <laughs> <laughs> she just wants to push the caps lock button because it lights up. Oh, I see. I'm reminding myself how to pronounce today's topic. I'm, I'm distracted by the fact I should probably change the tab on my screen. I'm distracted by the, th the fact that I've been working on um, a, a JavaScript thing that tracks uh initiative and damage in a dnd game uh because That's i just finished i just finished uh west boss's es6 for everyone and i decided that i was going to do something in javascript and so what could i do in javascript well i'm running this dnd campaign let's do something dnd themed and and that was that was what came of it so are you using just like browser store or I'm not saving stuff yet. I'm mostly just like chaining a bunch of uh, events to like when you click on a button and something happens. Um, so um, it starts out, you add the characters. And so, so if you refresh, you lose all the stuff. But if you don't refresh, then you have all the characters and you have, um, you can add their dexterity and it calculates their initiative. And then you add their initiative role and it adds their bo bonus to the role. And then it's going to, it has, I haven't done this part yet, but it's going to sort characters by initiative and then allow you to enter in the damage they've taken and then oh. their hit points. Hmm. That's um, a little message when they've taken damage like oh. Oh, and so it took damage. And then I'm gonna um I'm also gonna style it. Right now it's not it's not it's just unstyled so it's ugly as hell. Um <laughs> but um I do plan on like pulling in like um uh webpack and, and doing that and, and, doing some sort of a build process. I think that's a great use of JavaScript. <laughs> Star Trek. <laughs> it's also like, I don't know, my heart swells with like the nerdiness of the sentence. <laughs> of all those sentences. It's like so much compact to one to one end goal. <laughs> Yeah, I've been I've been thinking about D and D so much lately that I've been dreaming in the campaign setting that uh, this game is running, and we've only had one session. It's just that I've been like doing like tense amounts of like, research in the background. I, ha I had a dream the other night where I was like dying in the desert of this uh, world that we're playing this game. In. 
So you're fully, yeah, you're fully saturated. I, I'm fully, yeah, I'm fully saturated. I'm oversaturated at this point. <laughs> Where it's like your subconscious is just like, oh, you, you weren't thinking about it enough during the day. Right. Yeah. Let's throw this in. Also, the fact that you're like dying in the desert of the world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not really even a good, a good no. subconscious. No. Oh. <laughs> Today, Gary is going to be replaced by Charlotte, uh, who is going to take... <laughs> place in the episode. With opinions on everything. Yes, answering the questions uh, and, and putting in her feedback about the, the topic of the day. But she might get it right. You never it's know. True. Maybe it really is. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> she, stumbles, she stumbles across the, the actual answer. You're like, oh, crap. It wasn't 42. That was the secret of life, the universe, and everything. It was really just baby talk the whole time. <laughs> I like the movement of the ceiling fan, though, when Gary's not a. <laughs> it's not. Frame. It's not too Twin Peaks for you, I guess. It, I guess it needs the sound effect for it to be really Twin Peaks. It's kind of a Twin Peaksy angle, though. That's true. Yeah. Which I didn't. I we. Well, I rewatched, and then my partner rewatched Twin Peaks for the first time, but we didn't watch the new one. Good. Which I feel like probably. I think we're I think we're good. I feel like we maybe came to a Did you watch the movie? Watch no. Firewalk with me? I think we you know, on the fence. Firewalk with me is acceptable, but I, I, I still I still maintain the new series just just didn't didn't work the way that well, I Well someone someone else was basically like it didn't add anything that I thought I was missing. <laughs> yeah. I mean yeah, it, and it lost all the things that I, I felt like made Twin Peaks good, which is the quirky humor. There was not enough of the quirky humor, and that's literally the thing that makes it watchable. Like, there's a lot of, like, horrible, like, like disturbing, like, visuals and just seeing, like, the, the subject matter is really, like, heavy, but you have, like, damn fine coffee and and amazing cherry pie and it makes everything kind of like light and then you have like like um we were actually just having this conversation about nadine uh last night and like you have like characters like that are just like weird and quirky and kind of funny and that like lifts the whole the whole thing and it makes it it makes it a lot more palatable and and the new series lost that it was really disappointing that's too bad i've made the right decision then yeah <laughs> Plus, plus the the man from another place was replaced by a tree or something, oh. and and that's because they couldn't get the actor to uh, to to agree to the a contract or something like they were having uh, a contract dispute over how much to pay him, and and so they replaced him with a tree. That's and, one way to deal with it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if you're if you're David Lynch, then you could pretty much do whatever the hell you want. I, I guess. I guess I should, like I should probably just go set my laptop in front of a tree for this episode. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then just kind of shake it whenever you whenever you say something <laughs> you see like an arm come in and <laughs> just like a <laughs> rustle yes. yeah. uh, one of my friends recommended david lynch's uh, memoir the audiobook version apparently is quite good which i have to add to my already pretty have you ever have you ever watched there's a couple like cooking videos that he's made what he he made a there's one that I watched a while ago I think I think and it was about uh him how to make quinoa and so oh he starts off by making and it's all in black and white because uh, David Lynch because of course <laughs> <laughs> like how could it be in color and and so he starts off making the quinoa and then he like veers off into this weird like <laughs> like as as the quinoa is cooking he's like off in this like tangential like discussion of reality and he comes back in the and the quinoa is made <laughs> it sounds like a saturday night live sketch or something <laughs> and it's not it's <laughs> totally real and the man is insane that's so weird okay so um, so like i might my, my imagine in my head his memoir is like him talking about something and then veering off into some weird like not even a tangent like just something completely irrespective of what he was previously talking about and talking about that thing for about 45 minutes like <laughs> like badgers or something and then going back to like 
something that happened to him. <clears throat> but he doesn't view it as a tangent. Apparently, no. he also has, like, in the memoir, I guess he has not interview, he doesn't interview them, I don't think, but, like, other people talking on him, and so then they also, like, different voices come in for those people, um, and they talk about him and not necessarily comp complimentary <laughs> things. <laughs> um, not bad things, I don't think, but, like, not they're not showering him with praise, I guess. I don't know. Anyway. Everything, everything that you need to know about, about David Lynch, I think you can learn from the song Crazy Clown Time. <laughs> I'm still stuck on this, like, how to make... Episode I've, I've attended. <laughs> how to what make... What the hell is going on? David Lynch. <laughs> I mean, that explains it, obviously, but what the hell is going on? Your ceiling fan started it. <laughs> yeah, it's... Yeah, I blame your ceiling fan. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's even more Lynchian. I was gonna say, I was like that. That angle's even more like. <laughs> and then you and then you zoom in, and then you add like the sound of like some factory machinery, and then you overlay the fact the sound of factory machinery with like the sound of waterfalls. Yeah, I was gonna say the sound of waterfalls. And then you do a slow transition to a forest. <laughs> <laughs> With this, with the sound effects still there, and then a, and then a extreme close up of of, of Gary right there. Yeah, yeah. that's good. <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah, this should work for the rest of the episode, huh? <laughs> it's right, right in there. The the subject this week is not Twin Peaks, but <laughs> it may as well be. <laughs> Sorry, Gary. <laughs> Okay, the topic for this week is syzygy, which I will spell. Syzygy is spelled S-Y-Z-Y-G-Y, or S-Y-Z-Y-G-Y. You might need to type it out. Yeah, <laughs> syzygy. S-Y-Z-Y-Z-Y-Z-Y. Syzygy. Syzygy. So that, <laughs> if I, I know I've done my job properly when I get a really deep sigh from Gary. <laughs> I mean, that, that it reminds me so much of the city in California, Zizix. I love doesn't pass the exit for Zizix. I, well, do you know the story of Zizix? No. So the story of Zizix and the reason why it has the name Zizix is because that was where, like, um, some... Uh, commune slash cult was located and they built their com their compound in this part of California and they called it Zizix. So it would be the last, they had to register with uh, as a organization or something. And so they called it Zizix. So it would be the last thing in like the phone book or the last thing on like taxes. So they would get ignored by the government. So it's called Zizix because they literally picked the last letter and the most unlikely combination of letters uh, so that they would not uh, get noticed by, by the rest of society. Does that, um, what happens like when people started printing phone books and salespeople started going from the back to the front? <laughs> well, the plan backfired at that point. I mean, it only, it only I think, lasted as an as a actual like, uh, cult cult yeah for a couple years and then and then it wasn't and then it just disbanded or whatever but the city remained how long do cults usually last is that is, that like is a there, good is there a, an average cult lifespan is have people done studies on it? i don't know a couple years i guess although i mean it also depends i think on what you define a cult like i think the longer it goes uh, the less it becomes a cult and the more it becomes a, an established religion like scientology or uh, arguably the Church of Latter-day Saints. It probably also depends on their kind of mythology that's associated or whatever with um, their yeah. end game, I guess, because their end game could come a lot sooner, depending yeah. on... <laughs> well, and I guess to that end, like, how, how uncomfortable their belief system is from the accepted mainstream probably has a lot to do with the definition. Yeah, I mean, cult is really a determination that is made from the outside. Of people, right? Yeah, I don't think people in are like, ah, this is the best yeah, cult. I'm in a cult. <laughs> like I'm All in the cults I've joined. I'm in a community of like-minded people, and that defines... Best Kool-Aid here. Best Kool-Aid. <laughs> 
Now, I read an interesting article the other day by someone who even after she left, like the commune is what she was referring it to. And then like once she started just telling stories to people about her childhood and everyone was like giving her re really weird reactions basically. And she was just like, she was like, even after I had left, I didn't realize that other people would view it as a cult until I started telling stories. And she's like, even then she wasn't really comfortable calling it a cult because for various reasons, but anyway, but it was interesting that it was only until she started realizing that for her, her normal wasn't everybody else's normal mm -hmm. and in a pretty drastic way, but, but for her, it was just a commune. It was just like, Oh, you know, like my family was hip were hippies and like, this was just how I grew up. And it wasn't, it was more like she was viewing it as like more hippie, like free love lifestyle rather than like kind of more abusive behavior until she started telling stories. And then people were like, that's not kosher. Like that's not a thing. <laughs> yeah, I've read, I've read stuff about um, the Osho commune in India that was uh, along similar lines, mm -hmm. um, which I had uh, previously not been aware of. Uh, like I, I was, I was one, at one point the proud possessor of the Osho Zen Tarot, and I had no idea what like who Osho was, but I thought the cards were cool, and I used them a lot. And then I, and then later on, I read this all this stuff about how it's kind of a culty commune thing that is not particularly healthy. I'm like, oh, huh, interesting. Um, everything is problematic. Why? Yeah, everything is gross <laughs> and weird. What's the topic again? Is what? Uh, syzygy. 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 Yeah. Syzygy. Um, so much like Zizix, uh, Syzygy. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Syzygy is uh, a community in northern Ontario uh, that oh. celebrates the snow and huh. lives naked uh year round uh in the snow and in the not snow uh and and they are uh approximately 150 individuals uh and they are, do not recruit except on alternating uh fourth thursdays of the month <laughs> I'm like oh that's a schedule that's what that is <laughs> Yeah, you have to think about. So there it. has to be like some kind of shaman whose job it is to keep track of the calendar. You know? Yeah, right. Can you yeah. Imagine, are you one person there? Like, there's was one person. They're, they're called the they're yeah, called the syzygist, and and they're the ones that are in charge of the entire uh, calendar. They don't actually follow the traditional like Western calendar. They follow their own calendar, and the syzygist is the one that actually sends people out to to go recruit uh, new, new people. I wonder what the recruit pitch is like. <laughs> Hope you have a good concept of time. <laughs> you like snow? You like snow. <laughs> but do you can really I, like snow? Can I interest you in some snow? <laughs> How much do you like the cold? Welcome to Northern Ontario. <laughs> <laughs> and they live in yurts. Of Actually, course. they live in one really big yurt. <laughs> they the must if it holds 150 people. Yeah, it's a really large yurt. Yeah, super yurt. <laughs> Super Mega yurt. Syzygy. Uh, Syzygy is um, the study. No, not study. Gee. Maybe it is the study. The study of size. Versus. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on where you're from. <laughs> Yeah, I think yeah, that's it. Study of size. I, 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 kind yeah, of boring. Right yeah. This is bigger than that thing. Okay. <laughs> Syzygy. Huh, I'm going to write a paper. <laughs> so if you're a syzygist, you're the person that just comes up and judges things based on size. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're taller like, than that person. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Syzygists are often invited into uh, uh, conferences and retreats where uh, people need to be organized by height for <laughs> photo taking opportunities. And they call in an expert, the syzygist, <laughs> and they say, yep, you go over there, and you go over there, and you go over there, and all of you in the front row. Yeah, it's like, and you, you're definitely in the back row. They, they pull up in a rental car, they open the trunk, and they bring out their bread box. Like, yeah. yep, all are bigger. <laughs> or maybe they measure people's egos. 
at conferences. Ooh. <laughs> Call it prone. <laughs> I was thinking like they, um, uh, never mind. I, I had a thought, but I couldn't really get it to come together. It was like two passing ideas waving at each other. <laughs> don't eat my toe. I won't. Thank you. That's fair. <laughs> I think what I like about her noises is that when you're off screen, it could be you, it could be her. Like, who knows where that last squeak came from? <laughs> I, was, I was chuckling about my syzygy. <laughs> we, uh, she's all fired up because we just had applesauce. Natural sugars for the win, huh? <laughs> oh. I wish I got so, like amped after eating applesauce oh i bought I'm usually this like i'm still hungry <laughs> i bought this orange juice um like local orange juice i mean literally like you know careful there might be, still be seeds in that kind of orange juice right um and and i drank a large glass of it yesterday and the sugar content just natural sugar content i felt like i had, had like a cup of coffee i was just wired after drinking it um and you have was, good oranges because you're in Florida. Yeah, that's helpful. Yeah, they, it was, as far as orange juice goes, like, a lot of good orange juice here. But there are still some orange juices I drink from time where I'm like, whoa, that is a, that's a memorable orange juice. And this was one of those yesterday. And I still have, like, a quarter gallon of it left. No, what do I have left? I think I bought a quarter gallon of it, so I can't have had some and still have a quarter gallon left. Unless it's magic orange juice. Let me check. <laughs> Let me check if it's... Are you checking to see if it's magic orange yes. juice? Or if there's any left? Yes. There's about 30 <laughs> ounces left. <laughs> I have no magic juice in my fridge. Ra raise your hand if you can, in your, in your head, visually picture 30 ounces. Because <laughs> I just looked at it. I'm still <laughs> a little bit less than halfway full in a quarter gallon jug. Two ounces less. 64 is a quarter. I'm doing my best, but. An eighth of a gallon. It's a little, like a little less than an eighth of a gallon. My spatial reasoning clearly is not so great. <laughs> well, maybe we could just do, maybe I could just bring it out. Bring out the magic juice. This is illustrating the syzygy. Oh, that's much it more is. than I was. <laughs> than I was so, so the angle is not helping because on the screen it looks way more than half, but. I don't know. <laughs> I can't like tilt it so it's flat because when I do no, that. No, please don't pour juice on your computer. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and sorry, manager, that's why I can't work today. I poured orange juice on my. You're like, my keyboard is incredibly sticky. Demonstrating how sugary the juice was. <laughs> you would have to issue a syzygy. Oh, I would, wouldn't I? Yeah. A formal syzygy? A formal syzygy. It's like an apology, except it's except except not. Except it's it's not is as. It, uh, is know. it a writing? Is a syzygy a kind of writing? It might be. It could be. <laughs> it is a is a document uh, that illustrates the size of a thing. The size of a thing. The the, uh, the syzygy of a thing. It's like it's like an exegesis, except it's a syzygy. A syzygy. I feel like um, it sounds really similar to synergy. So maybe it's some kind of corporate speak. Could be. Well, it isn't yet, but I think if we keep using it in sentences, we could probably make it uh, a buzzword. Hashtag syzygy. <laughs> I just need to hang out more in those corporate environments. Yeah. Get a catch on. That's a good point. Where could we do this? <laughs> Who do we know that's perfect? I would need to change my wardrobe to be able to fit in. <laughs> Blend seamlessly. Like Jane Goodall. <laughs> yep. G. When Jane Goodall was living with, with uh what she did live with uh apes mm -hmm. <laughs> did she like wear Have a corporate wardrobe hair <laughs> like <laughs> did she just kind of wear normal 
I think just normal. Place. Yeah. But I think, oh, like, similar to camping, I think you just, like, start. Well, thank you. Smelling <laughs> <laughs> um, well, in the documentary, Girl is in the Mist. Mi mist? Right? Yeah. Is that Jane Goodall? No. Yeah, that was, right? I don't know. It wasn't even a documentary. It was a movie about. But... Yeah, it's a movie about. I like to think of things that are not documentaries as documentaries, like Star Wars. <laughs> you know? You're like, well, the documentary is Star Wars, The New Hope. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> I can't take credit for that, though, because I asked in um, the space channel at work that I created. Um, <laughs> I hope I you're not the only member. There's got to be tons of other no, people. There's a, uh, let's see how many, how many other people there are. It's not tons, but it's... But the company uh, itself isn't gigantic either, so ratio-wise, I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, there's 15 people in there. Well, wait. One of them is a bot. One of them is a bot. How many other bots are in there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bots uh, there's only two bots in there. So there's 13 humans in there, hmm. allegedly. Alleged, allegedly. Have, I all, have I met all these people in person? Can you vouch for their humanness? I, they all exist. I've, met, I've seen them all with my own eyes, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> all 12 of the others in there. Well, um, I mean, technically you've seen us with your own eyes, but that doesn't mean anything. That's true. That's true. That's true. I think that Chris is a hologram. Um, yeah, like I might AI be... has come a really long way. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> So I asked what were people's favorite space movies because I went on like a space movie binge at the beginning of the year. I don't know if you all recall that or not. I started my year by watching a space movie every day for mm. as many days I as I could like do it. You're, it's not so much the beginning of the year as like you're constantly on a space binge and yeah. all the time. <laughs> um, so, so I asked like, what, what are your favorite space movies? And one of the folks in there said, my favorite oh, space movie oh, is the documentary. Oh. Star Wars. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Did you watch Spaceballs as part of your space movies? I didn't. I, didn't. Oh. I was really going for like, like <gasps> real space movies, not like sci-fi. Yeah. So like the right stuff, Apollo 13. Um, what else was in there? So a bit more heavy hitting than Spaceballs is what I'm hearing. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, Spaceballs is a documentary. It's, I, love, it's, uh, I love Mel Brooks. There's, there were some creative liberties, but yeah, you're right. It was a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> How about Muppets in Space? Yeah. Um, no, I have not. I need to add that to the list too. Jeez. Does Muppets in Space uh, have any cameos by Pigs in Space? I don't think so, unfortunately. That, that is sad. That, that should be a thing. I don't think so. I haven't watched very many of the Muppet movies. I think I've watched I, one. I remember enjoying oh. Muppets in Space, but I, I'm, I was probably it's been, just... It's been a few years. Been a while. Well, the whole premise is basically Gonzo realizes that he's like a weirdo and wants to That's... like figure out his origin story and his, find like some other, some other Gonzos. <laughs> How does... How do the Muppets figure out how to go to space? And here I am sitting in Jacksonville, Florida. Um, well, Muppets are much lighter than humans. So <laughs> <laughs> they have less of a syzygy. And, and they're is less, a true syzygist. <laughs> and they're less uh, they're smaller. <laughs> they're less prone to damage from things like cannons. So really they just need something to launch them into orbit and then they could and then they're in space. So I think it is much easier generally speaking to uh to get a muppet into space than it would be to get a gary into space i have um a monthly like object oriented hangout that i do and it was last night and um we were talking and i looked at the clock and realized oh there's a rocket launch i have to go it's been fun and as soon as i turned on the rocket feed the feed from spacex um they were like oh upper level winds are out of bounds so uh scrubbed Ah, and then he rejoined the uh, the conversation, and everybody was there talking about Gary dropping nope. the call because of uh, <laughs> rocket launches. No, we all called it quits when I said I was heading out. So I like was like, I'll see y'all next month, and kind of knocked the whole thing over in exchange for a launch that wasn't happening. Yeah, wow. So I feel like a jerk. 
Well, we had a similar conversation in our house because I saw Ground Control Bot had tweeted an hour and I was like, oh, there's a SpaceX launch. But then when we signed on, I was like, when? I've really been thinking about how best to handle delays with um, Ground Control Bot. Because right now the way delays are handled is uh, not at all, um, hmm. which is certainly one solution. Um, and I need to think of a better way to do that. Like a different color text, like, hey, this launch is, is, has been delayed. Because hmm. um, a lot of times we know fairly quickly, you know, I mean, like is we that, knew last is that night. something that, that is a data source in the feed that you're getting? No. So yeah. I, the way I, no, there's no, it would be, it would take like some kind of human involvement. But let's be honest, like most launches, I, I'm a human and I'm involved. I'm not involved yeah. in the launch, but I'm involved in watching the launch and scouring Twitter to find out like, how's fuel loading going and yeah. stuff of that nature. What is the upper, what do the upper level winds look like? Hmm. Or if it's launching from Florida, like, you know, are the boaters staying out of the exclusion zone? <laughs> so, so Syzygy is, Syzygy is, Da, 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 da. Okay, it can be a few different things, but the main definition that seems to be utilized for it is astronomy-based. What? Plot twist. Um, which is, it's an <laughs> <laughs> um, So it's an alignment of three celestial things. So it's usually used in conjunction with like the sun, earth, and moon. It is like a synergy. Kind of, I yeah. kind of. I think that in the back of my mind, when you said that word, I'm like, I think I've heard that before, and I had no idea what the context was. But well, I I'd, I'd seen it, but I had never heard it. Like no one's saying it aloud. <laughs> yeah, in my circle. when I say heard it, I might mean like read or something. But yeah. it like it did tickle something in my brain. Like maybe I should know what that is, but I have no idea. That's it's cool. also the shortest English word with three Y's in Scrabble. So for a total of 25 Whoa. points, apparently. <laughs> Are there three Ys available in Scrabble, or do you have to use blanks to make that happen? I think you have to use blanks. Hmm. Actually, no, well, this says, when this says 25 points, though, it makes me feel like, now I, now I have to know how many Ys are. Yeah, let's, let's really answer, that's, Scrabble. oh, that, that happens is, to be one of the uh, listener questions. How many Ys are in Scrabble? <laughs> and now we're finding out, yes. Yeah. Well, I, I think I think that questions that could be answered by Google are probably not a good list of questions. There are two Ys in Scrabble, so there you That's go. You would need blank. one blank. Yeah. So we do have a couple uh, questions. Most of them are from Allison. One of them uh, I really wanted to bring to the show. Uh, yes. It's from Henry T. Garcia at ah. senttip.com. At what? Senttip. I think I'm what? pronouncing that correctly. Scent tip. I don't know what that is. Tip of a scent, obviously. Yes. Um, okay. And and the he says we want to purchase your website traffic. Hi, I'm Tom from Digital Marketing Market Company. Wait, Scent tip. Hold on. Oh, oh, this is Henry. It, yeah. Yeah. I did. Okay. <laughs> the person is Henry T. Garcia, and it says, "Hi, I'm Tom." I, I can oh, only assume that's what a T is for. Yeah, the Henry is silent. Henry are you searching? Tom. Are you searching for a way to generate more money through your site? Well, the answer to your question, Henry T. Garcia, Tom, is no, we're not. Um, but he goes on and yep. says, "Visit here to get income and bonus." HTTPS www.centip.com slash earn hyphen ten hyphen more. You will be glad to know Media.net, which is owned by Bing and Yahoo, as one of the biggest pools of advertisers in the world, they will pay more to purchase your website traffic. More than what? I don't know. Uh, the and average 10, earnings from 1,000 like ads more, impressions is $10. The average earnings from 1,000 ad impressions is $10. That's, that doesn't sound right. That's crappy. Uh, currently, they are expanding their business, and you will get 10% more of your revenue for the first three months. Join now. Thanks a lot for your time, Henry Garcia, creator and CEO, Sense Tip Co. Limited. So Sense is spelled C E N T S, not S C E N T S. It's it. <laughs> I thought it was Scent Tip, and I'm like, what? It's it's C E N T T I P. Yes. Scent Tip. I heard Scent Tip, and I was thinking maybe there was someone like encroaching on Allison's turf, and we needed to drop that <laughs> candle. Person. Well, I, I don't, don't know. know. $10 I, seems like a lot more than, than uh, $0. Mm -hmm. 
and it's even it's ten percent more than that, from what I understand. <laughs> yes, but that's it would make ten, it eleven. That's 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 ten dollars for a thousand ad impressions. Yeah, so we could probably get somewhere in the neighborhood of ten dollars a year. Um, I'm, that's a lot of orange juice. It's not. I, I'm juice. skeptical <laughs> that we could get ten dollars a year. Let's see. Um, well, no, we have all time. This is shocking. Uh, all time oh. visits to our site is seven thousand thirty-seven. That's a lot more than I. That's that's would have more than ten dollars. But is that refreshing because of the genre nader? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Well, that can't be because of the genre nader, because the genre nader is somewhere in the neighborhood of like 43 billion, right? <laughs> 43 billion. It does. We do. Uh, so the top posts and pages, if I go to, if I go to the best, ev uh, the best day, best, best ever, 526 views, uh, it says, um, 509 views came from Twitter. That's interesting. Uh, and then... 510, I don't know how this works, how, how, how Jetpack is doing the, this math. It says 526, there's 509 views from Twitter. I, I guess they all went to the Genre Nader page. So, so on January 30th, 2018, we had 510 views on the Genre Nader story page, and then another 15 uh, hits on the Genre Nader uh, page, and only one to the podcast episodes page. <laughs> So, uh, do we think that people are hitting the genre a page? A little bit skewed. Do think people are hitting the genre your page because Google is like providing search results when people are searching things like uh, eTuba or stuff of that nature? I don't think that those things would get indexed, although they do have uh, they do have um. They do have unique URLs if you do uh, um, if you enter it in, but I don't think that they would get indexed because it's just dynamically generated. Um, one hit today came from groundcontrol.space slash success. Does that mean we had an install today? Uh, it does seem to indicate that. Let's go find out. Groundcontrol.space. Ooh, ah. I normally have to wait until the evening to see if. <laughs> I usually only find out in the evenings as well, but. It does look like uh, on a month to month basis, we get about 500 hits a month, which is, uh, yeah, a lot more than we've anticipated. Yeah, oh, yeah. Seven hours that. ago, seven hours ago, we added a new team. <laughs> There's something. I'm so curious. The teams that are adding these, the bot, like I just want to know. I'm like, I want to know more, <laughs> even though that's invasive, and I should. Well, so know on, more. I want to know more. A ground control bot. I keep name team names. Uh, so I want to know more about about what. Are... Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.